Well, we didn't know what the heck to expect going into the series. Triple Septi coming out for M80. I didn't expect much less than how it went down then, Roy, because honestly, I... I don't know. It worked somehow really well. Like, I mean, he looked really good with this composition with the 13-7 win. That's a statement. Yeah, I mean, somehow it just feels like kind of a, you're kind of underselling them just a little bit. I think their ideas were pretty on point, to be honest, on both sides. Their defense half was pretty flawless. They had a lot of really good ideas in the way they spread out their utility. And I mean, just saying the word utility is almost giving me PTSD for that. Just watching that <laughs> match because they just have so much of it everywhere. Everyone's trying to go. It's just a lot to handle, to be honest. Yeah, one sentinel for each site, right, guys? Like, yeah, hey, that's all it takes. That's, that's all it takes. <laughs> but also, it, it hurt TSM to not be playing a, a razor for them to be playing a neon because it doesn't clear those trips and those traps as easily. And you saw how much slower TSM had to play because of that. I mean, I'd be, I'd be so annoyed right now if I was TSM because last time we saw them on Lotus. With this Neon composition, like, they look pretty good. And then now, all of a sudden, going up against this trippy Senti, something that you're not necessarily prepared for whatsoever. I never would have prepared for this, right? I'm not gonna lie. I mean, that was frustrating. I feel like they started to kind of figure out a little bit of things, but then we went into the side swap, and it's like they had to relearn M80's playbook all over again. Now, for, for a bit, it was looking really good for TSM. I mean, it seems like they were finally catching on, especially towards the end of the first half, and they won Pistol. Like, you know I can even see in Twitch, everyone's like, oh my God, this comp sucks on attack. TSM's going to win, lol. <laughs> but then, you know, they, they come out, they have like this genius game plan of just overrunning sites with just impeccable amount of like exec util pretty much. Yeah, I think it took a lot of uh, heavy lifting from TSM at moments, like what we saw, like a Sim 4K and a Proto 4K. And I'm like, OK, is that what it's going to take to to break M80? And sure enough, it was an eight to four half where I really thought like you needed a minimum of 10 rounds with Triple Sentinel or else you know, were maybe getting mm -hmm. into the realm of the danger zone trying to go on offense with that. So what was an M80 offense with that? You know, the Prowler, the Paranoia, they lacked options, but they still got the job done i mean once we swapped over to attack it's like okay yeah m80 like they they got some sharp shooters on their squad and they were very careful with how they planned things out right and i think that was kind of the biggest difference is they didn't really have the most to be working with yep. but they had a little bit to be able to kind of execute off of and beyond that then landing the shots and winning that fights out right, so, right. Sure. That'll, that'll take get you there yeah remember how we were in the in the, in the kind of the pre-show we were talking about the fact that m80 just doesn't really need anyone to have like an insane pop-off like we're seeing it again right here like yeah xander is mvp quote unquote but everyone is like within two plus like plus two kills of each other right 17 at the highest 13 at the lowest like everyone on m80 is playing their game they're all having impeccable impact they're all playing extremely well and their ideas are very clear and it's, it's, it's a kind of a nice vision it's kind of a refresh as well it's kind of nice to see that teams have like very new ideas compared to what we what we're used to seeing but I think the Xander had such an important role for M80, especially on offense, as one of the probably the best people or best agents to try mm -hmm. and enter the site with the paranoia, maybe a teleport, the smokes. Like Xander's role on this team, him staying alive is what was most important. Being the least amount of deaths, being the most the amount of first kills says a lot on how Xander pulled his weight as the, I guess, uh, the pseudo initiator, <laughs> I guess, on a triple sentinel team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this this comp every time i look at it it makes me it makes me laugh but in a good way this was awesome to see what m80 was kind of kind of putting together for this one and there is a couple of rounds that we wanted to be pulling up mm -hmm. first to talk about round six and look back to one of m80's defensive rounds because roy i think this was a really big indication of where tsm kind of struggled because here's the c site and sim's not having a great time yeah i mean you can just tell how much utility uh, there is like they try to exact the site they're getting gravnetted then they're getting walled off then they're getting caged off there's also four different trap sensors on that c site they try to pivot b after like completely getting shot down on the c side and then they come into even more utility there's a sage wall omen smoke they get paranoid on the entry they delay so long for the plants enough time to buy this like fast flood with the annihilation right as you can see right there and it's just like everything is it's like they're almost in complete control they're like an anime protagonist like full control <laughs> like from beginning to end of the round it, it really is nice to watch
Yeah, although M80 had this wealth of utility, it's really how effective was it? Was it just delay? Did it net in any kills? Mm -hmm. That was the, the key factor to determining the round. You can delay a round, but if there's still time to plant, TSM still had a chance. So they would pull a lot of utility at C and then pivot to B, and then that's how they were able to steal four offensive rounds. You know, it's not a lot, but it's more than we expected. <laughs> I mean, still talking a little bit of that utility, but instead looking at the sole initiator of the team, I mean, this is where uh, pulling up this next round, round 19, looking at M80 on the attack, where we got to see that even though they don't necessarily have the most ready to be pushing out onto a site with, they're going to make it work in a really grand fashion. I mean, yeah, you, you say that, but they have so much utility. Like, they're, they're completely slowing the left side of the site, not allowing the defenders to sort of get this pinch on the default position. They have the deadlock, the barrier mesh on the left as well, so they're completely blocked off from that side. Look, they're forced into that right lane where they there's even more utility being placed on that side. They have stun sensors everywhere. Like, they're, they're literally, as soon as they get on a site, they're like a spider. They're just whole <laughs> web all, everywhere getting spread out instantly. Yeah, I think there was just a lot of weight on like how this fade, how this prowler was going to hopefully try to break any trips yes. and just taking it one step at a time because that was kind of the main thing to break some of these traps and also just that early round of figuring out where all the agents are placed on the map and where are where is TSM, where are the problematic agents and M80's read on the game is kind of what Sierra said earlier, their fundamentals are next level and that's what made them the better team that map. And that's going to be a little bit of a tough blow now for TSM, losing out on their map pick in a grand fashion and now going over to M80's map pick. An ice box as well that's looked really good really good for them. I think that's the last time that anyone tries to take M80 to Lotus. I, M80's always <laughs> good on Lotus anyways. But now, like, TSM, this isn't single elimination. They can go to a lower bracket after this. But, Roy, this is where you start getting really worried unless they have maybe a trick up their own sleeve or M80 overcooked. Yeah, okay, what... what when I was thinking of like, okay, M80 is down to innovate. I did not expect that on Lotus. So now I'm kind of like thinking, okay, should I say that again for Icebox or am I just cursing TSM at that point? Because I really don't want them to pull out like a quadruple Sentinel composition here on Icebox <laughs> or something wild for us to watch. Um, I'm wondering if TSM are going to return to the Reyna because uh, I've seen kind of Reyna versus Jet matchups for TSM not mm -hmm. go so well because the Reyna lacks that mobility and that kind of explosive entry that Jet has. So if TSM stick to what they know, which is uh, the the Reyna, which hasn't, it's it's been hot or cold. They've innovated a lot. They've played Harbor. They've played Sage. They've played all kinds of stuff. TSM are still very much aware that Icebox is a weak map for them. And this is where playoffs, you bring out all the aces up your sleeve, but then who knows what M80 is going to play. So I think TSM are very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, even looking back at just M80's usual comp on this, it's, I think, pretty annoying in my opinion when you got, like, the Viper, you got the Omen to deal with, and, like, the KJ at, like, that last stand. And if M80 do want to try and switch something up since that last time that we've seen them, I don't know, I feel like... For TSM, I'm looking at how they can kind of shake that last loss and make sure like they're going into this next series, Roy, just kind of like fresh ideas. Okay, like, don't worry, we have prepped and just try and adapt faster if M80 sure. do want to get a kind of a little silly quirky with this one again. Yeah, I mean, TSM is a good icebox team at the end of the day, right? Like, yeah, they might not have the jet like Kiwi was saying. Maybe they don't have that that mobility, but the Reyna adds another layer of utility that people need to break when they're defending sites, right? Like, there's just you're literally playing aim labs. I got to flick to the top right. I got to flick top left. I got to break this and I got to break that just to hold, hold the site down. You know, it's like it can get kind of overwhelming. So yeah, they might not have mobility, but they're compensating by just having more stuff to overwhelm sites with and take their 1v1s or just like kind of just set themselves up. But TSM don't come off like a team that has a giant ego, or at least like they're not one to act like they do in the map. Like even Sim playing Neon, like how in the replays we saw, we're not seeing ne like this Neon run it down, yeah. use the speed. It was very a careful type of Neon approach, mm -hmm. like even using the Neon walls to kind of protect them while they were breaking util. This Neon playing still very defensively on defense, as they should, but it's not Sim like trying to handle the lobby by themselves and pull out a win forcefully. It's, it's Sim trying to play with the team and i'd love to see him have these peak moments but he also doesn't want to be a liability and the reason these rounds look even more losable <laughs> especially going up against the beats that is m80 the team that's saying that they might be back in vintage form and they're definitely showing up a form today and it's a lot to be excited about so i don't know i'm curious if then we will get the switch coming out from them yet again and tsm i mean again i feel like 
little bit of a parrot going back to this, but like we know that they have the skills and the capability. We know that the players can shoot. It's all about just kind of Roy that coming together at this mm-hmm. at this line, being able to kind of push M80. Because I know TSM when they're playing at their best, they definitely can. This can be a different series. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there, there's just so many good like takeaways, right? Like. Players can kind of take over the map anytime they want. I do believe we have the agents ready as well. So we could probably sort of see what icebox compositions they're running right here. And then from there, we can kind of formulate our own opinions as to what to expect in this matchup. And yeah, just pretty much standard. Okay. okay. Yeah. We we already went off the wall today so far. We're going back to kind of the regular thing. I think the, at TSM, maybe at Gen, this might be a little sigh of relief here but i gotta say for tsm when i get to see this arena come on out this is always something that i'm mad bumped for because talking about how sim doesn't have an ego and i agree but i love being able to see then more of an ego agent come out and sim yeah. can definitely frag out yeah i think m80 m80 tried to throw tsm for a loop on tsm's map pick just thinking that they did all this homework on m80 and they knew how to break them but now m80 can just go back to what they know best which is this being their best map so why change something that's not broken i think the big question mark is around this reina and if sim can have that pop off can they really take advantage of that small window of opportunity where that leer has to be shot like roy said mm -hmm. and they can act upon that because yes the leer can be shot yes the gecko flash can be shot but what you do in that moment is what matters. Yeah, I'm also kind of a, on the other side of the, of the fence as well. I'm kind of a big fan of the Omen on this map as well. If you're if you're running no duelist, because you have that extra layer of one ways that you can use towards the B site early or towards the A site early and try to get some of that utility out of TSM's hands so they can take that initial control and as well as keeping their elevation, right? So you can still play top top yellow and you can still have the op presence that Koala likes to pull out. So it's a, it's a very well-balanced composition for M80 that kind of has all their bases covered in that regard. This is definitely not going to be a match that you want to win. Will TSM be able to take it to a game three or is this going to be M80 closing it out in two? We're going to take a quick break so you can get your popcorn, refill your water, and after that, it will be our casters to take you to your icebox. Welcome back, folks, here to our first series of the day in our quarterfinals of our Valorant Challenges playoffs. Great to be here, of course. I am Uber here with Gompers. We saw a wacky first map, Lotus. Definitely what, not one we're going to soon forget. Three Sentinels for M80. It paid off for them. But on Icebox, Gompers, something a little bit more standard for both sides. We are seeing M80 return back to the no duelist comp, the double initiator, double controller oh, yeah. setup. They, uh, they hate the duelist. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> the question is why, but I think it just works out uh, either way. Because, again, starting off in the defense, <coughs> feeling pretty comfortable with it. But Sim, moving on to the Reyna, um, which, again, not too much of a surprise moving back to the standard of what TSM like to play with. But, you know, with Sim being such a solid, solid player, mechanics-wise and aim-wise, I feel like this is pretty fit. And I like it. I think, like... The Reina offers you a ton. You know, Roy brings it up. The Leer is something you have to break, uh, you know, coming into the sites or defending them is, is really important. You'll probably see that play out here. Is Sim likely will try and Leer now into the back of this B site. And Proto gets fought down straight away, though. BCJ anchoring like a boss here from Crow's Nest. The net finds a timing out from Rafters. Blink and you miss it, folks. M80, take the pistol with three still standing. They just, like, rolled with that. I think it was such good placement, honestly, on the side of BCJ, just kind of crouch playing up inside of Nest, being able to just take an angle that nobody's expecting. But for TSM, yeah, uh, good approach to it. Although, needing a lot more pistol round gone. Of course, it's not the most detrimental time of the game, but definitely the time where it starts to give you that momentum. And M80, they're running off a win for the last, for the last game. So, it, you know, it really is good in their position right now. I mean, I'm feeling great. Taking the pistol here uh, pretty convincingly. Getting an outlaw in the hands of Koala Noob in round two. These are all things that make you smile as an M80 fan. Okay, so that zero point there does at least indicate that someone's playing fairly close to pipes on the defender site. Tears unlikely going to move in here. And again, now plenty of that util to work with. 
Maybe a Dizzy that gets cycled here by seven, thrown up above pipes, and we'll see if Xana can hold his ground. All they gotta do is kind of wait for somebody to make that first move on the side of TSM. They settled down with some util though. An interesting Viper Wall here. It's a fast hit Viper Wall. They didn't want to telegraph anything too early in the round, so they throw it up here. BCJ adjusting though, playing towards the back of the side. It was poised towards Xander down, who couldn't find anything from 410. BCJ though repositions here. He's going to get pinched on his left, and he doesn't see it coming. They're far too quick for him. Net does want to break back into the side here, which is the ghost, and the attackers are so low in health. Seven has to try and swing this now, but in a one versus three, having so little health, offers himself up to Koala Noob, and that is another M80 round. Look at that Viper Ball. <laughs> it's so weird. Dude, they just like... I, I mean, I guess, yeah, for TSM anti-eco round, so... Kind of, what it, what do you have to do there? Yeah. Uh, they were going pretty slow. I, it cuts off like the rafter swing that we saw from the BCJ, I yeah. think, in round one, which is which is fun. Yeah. Don't normally see that one thrown out. Normally, it's like just a vertical one from, you know, from like Belt's area, right, that cuts off screen. So, fun little adaptation there, but it's going to take more than that to win that anti-eco. Yeah, for M80, they're solid right now, too. BCJ loading up with that thrash is going to be able to use it. Um, just to solidify this round, too. Like, up oh, coming out, Koala Noob making an investment on that. My apologies, Net making an investment on that to give to Koala Noob there. Nitro wants to play forward there. We see that a lot from Jets at the start of these rounds. Want to push up and punish someone trying to push. Just like a proto is. And bear in mind, a proto himself can flash. You might need to use some of that uh, offensive util, though, to force people off these posted angles. Because I think Koala Noob is playing on top of 410 with an operator. <laughs> That's a scary prospect. Oh, on pipes, rather. They have tons of util already settled over on B. And space as well. They could catch out this 1v1. Oh, I like it from Gimon, though. He gets there early. He just doesn't expect Nismo to be on the other side of the corner. Still no plant here. That's the problem. TSM were really committed to be, despite how deep Gimon was able to get. They can still go for a plant here. Make no mistake. The Viper Wall, though, can't be brought back up again with Gimon six feet under this round. Nah, but they pretty much have B at this point. I mean, they know where some of these players are. Unfortunate timing there. On the side of Xander. Dude! Get some of that damage down, but again, not still in the hands of Koala Noob, and so much more to do, but it gets shut down immediately on that post plant. Oh, Poise was so low, Net was waiting for him, and he chops down, tries to take the fight. Thrash here in the third round, it's about as early as he gets on this map. Collateral straight into Sim, and Koala Noob is able to follow up pretty comfortably with that operator. Now, if there's a world where your Viper is still alive, and you can actually use that wall to try and get a safe plant from, that round looks completely different for TSM. They really... Let that gun round go to waste. They got yeah. Pretty much nothing else to, to worry about. It's a reiteration of what happened last time for M80, right? Solid defense uh, to start. Maybe running away with a 4-0 uh, off the beginning, which is, de is a definite option, especially now with those Guardians starting to pop up. Not a lot of ultimates utilized and the potential in case something does go wrong for Net to have that retake with that lockdown. So... Yeah, a lot to look forward to from M80 here. Sims managed to get pretty deep there up belts. Oh my goodness. Boy spotted, trying to maybe cross into tube there. And yeah, Gimon wasn't seen going up tube itself, but eventually he gives his position away and allows Nismo to trade. That's a player advantage here for M80 on a round where TSM have now one Guardian left. A Proto able, is able to pick up Poise's drop weapon. And I think there is another Guardian inside too, but TSM are really running on fumes here. Toxins going up. Spike planted. Man gets that plan. Damn it, though, reposition. Sneakily! That's beautiful! He knows that Seven thinks that spot is clear. He sees him cross over towards Crow's Nest. Using his information perfectly in that moment. And now it's up to a proto. Mm. <laughs> okay. Hit with the paranoia. Still having to beat that operator player. And eventually will be brought down, though, as MA to get out to four rounds. With a bit of a lid at least being kept on this defending economy, right? This one, Xana had to buy again into this round, but the operator will be recovered and handed back over to Koala Noob again. And Mady are, yeah, 
still solid. Nothing really looking like they're, uh, I guess, more so an issue with whatever TSM are doing. Majority of the time, I guess it was just the unfortunate placement of, okay, well, we don't have economy for these next, like, whatever rounds. Um, let's just see what we can push for. Okay, uneven buys, that's fine. Uh, but more so now moving forward, we do have a lot to utilize here. A lot looking for to thrash readily available for seven. Not to mention Sim now might be able to actually fight a bit harder. How do they force the omen off this angle? Obviously for TSM, there's no counter. Koala might just hold this oh, yeah. angle down. Yeah. The smoke's gonna clear. Loose. Sim might look to burst through at a moment. Rash is on the way up to Koala Nu, but I don't think he can reach him. Shadows. Sim's able to jump across inside Empress. Koala Nu, though, pretty unlikely to give this position up. Again, Aaliyah could force him off the angle, but they're still able to play from this one way here. M80 sticking around to get use out of these smokes. You are powerless. This might be an issue, though. Null Command going to be thrown out now. Koala Nu can't TP away. That's the problem. He's actually caught here behind Yellow. He's committed to playing from this position. Poise goes down. It's going to be a raw contact being taken by the defenders here. Koala Nu tried to reposition. Took a shot. Missed and seven. Punishes him. Now three versus four. Don't be getting to the post plant now. And there is that Viper Util available for late in the round. And Sim just waited. And this one to come around the corner. It will only be net remaining. TSM finally get into the game. Yeah, that's got to be it. They did use a lot, though, to insert themselves into the round. Can that happen every single time? Absolutely not. But still potential for a new loadup. Uh, you know, obviously having to farm some of those orbs to give themselves something to work with here. But I think all in all, a uh, good pushback on M80, forcing them into a pretty uncomfortable position here. It seems like the economy is not looking too bright either. More so very, very scattered. Yeah, it's a bit awkward. I'd say Koala yeah. Noob as well has struggled uh, so far in this map to, to really get rolling with that operator. If we force off that angle in the previous round, and Null Command is hard to deal with for, you know, anyone who's embedded with an operator and was hoping to use some abilities to get to safety. <laughs> but that is a bit punishing. He respects the fact that there's an operator on the side of the M, but Sim had the one for free. Thought he didn't even have the second, but BCJ at least is able to find one. Eventually, Seven's patience is rewarded. I got the spike. It's all up to net. He's a long way away with just a sheriff to his name. Already taken out so many on a matey. Good thing they didn't really buy too heavily into this round, though. Gives them a chance in the future. But it is up to net what he wants to do. Uh, and if he wants to provide right now, seems like he might just be able to. Already low health coming down on GMD. Yeah, no. Yeah, not much to do here. Find an exit. I'd start trying to play it down a little bit on this growing economy of TSM. Now, obviously, they can buy pretty comfortably for the next couple of rounds. They've managed to keep that operator. And the attackers have another thrash to work with, so... Seven is really starting to get rolling now. A lot of those old ores are being fed to the gecko. And now it's time for that investment to be paid off. They're chilling right now, especially for TSM. They collect it up. They're kind of pretty well made. Seven loading up right back to that thrash too. Kind of utilized for this round as well. Actually having that for a while, my bad. And again, Koala Noob wants to play with this operator. He's going to mid this time. Most of the action is coming to though. Nismo's about to get busy. Okay, Koala Noob, though, Spike chimes down, in B. through mid. Finds Kimon, the spike is dropped because BCJ has this off angle. Great recovery from M80 to get some presence out of Boiler there to intervene in what was happening in the middle part of the map. Again, Koala Noob is brought down. That was the operator player here for M80. Seven has to go on a solo mission to recover the spike. And I think he knew it was... Under tube? Yeah, I think he's trying to come from a bit of an unexpected angle. There's a double face down there, Gompers. No <laughs> way he's getting out of that alive. Yeah, they just have to see his head. Oh my gosh, just a pixel, and they just run it down through the box there. But oh, they picked it up. Okay, BCJ's back, giving it over to Koala Noob. So we're chill. Um, in these moments, there's not much to worry about. They've got their investment back. 
They have four ultimates on the board. Like, you're pretty much looking at I, I, a, a very, very solid around that. That honestly could go south, especially with what TSM is packing, too. Seven picking up the op once again. Kind of letting that risk be taken for the attacking side. The A site, though, heavily contested over on the attacking side. Yeah, just net playing here for M80 for now. Obviously, net has a lockdown to allow M80 to get back into that site should it be taken by TSM. So it might be a pretty alt-heavy round, and Koala Noob has pushed up so deep for this info. I think the turret will be able to take contact there if he pushes too much further. TSM is also creeping up towards A. They hear no noise, so the only thing they can do on M80 is just kind of work themselves up, see if they can find any info. Smoke, though, settle down on B to make sure there is some sort of defense going on. Two players are boiling here for the defenders. Yeah, TSM pinging. They kind of know that he's always over to the right-hand side. This will be very telling. Okay, Zerifon got destroyed. And, well, there's just a contact peak there from the Rainer that spots at least one player a boiler. So here's that defender lockdown. This is now just going to put more pressure on the clock for TSM. They have to give up all that space they sort of manually cleared earlier on in this round. They might just throw a retake down of their own here because they need to get onto the side. They're running out of time. Seconds left. Can't use that. Okay, ready for Thrash, though. Run. Oh, and this might be the moment. The biggest thing is just how are they going to be able to take out that lockdown and really contest some of that space, though? I mean, they have to fight for it, M80, if they have want any chance of it. But it's actually quite a deep lockdown. It's a little bit further than the ones that get thrown at pipes in a safe spot here because TSM wanted M80 to try and fight them for it. Still, they're mainly able to get off the site now, and TSM can assume those post-plant positions. They have a thrash to play with to really interrupt M80's attempts here. Get that defuse, and yeah, thrash gets thrown out first. Spots one play, they're over towards the site, and it catches them out, but Koala Noob has a nice timing here for the top of pipes, and he finds two, three, drops down. It's going to be Nismo that ends up getting credited with the kill on Gimon. What a retake for M80. They just shrug off the thrash. They've got two players that at least can respond when one of them is detained. Hey, if Flash goes a long way, that's what we were missing on Lotus. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> that's huge, though. Like, again, synergy. Uh, good play style. Shot calling. I feel like M80 really do have every single piece of that. Okay, they worked well uh, with the lockdown, being able to find, uh, you know, a way to just counter that. Uh, adaptations for M80 are, are huge. We got to see it on Lotus. We got to see them constantly be able to understand, hey, they have the ult. Hey, they're going to do this. Hey, they're going to do that. What are we going to do in this situation? Okay, 3v4. How can we fix this? You know what? Koala noob, uh, j just just go shoot. I'll flash you in. And this is good. That's the communication you really do want to see. TSM struggling uh, to kind of fight against that, which again, teamwork makes the dream work. So there's got to be some discussion here, I think, about uh, yeah, the economic situation for TSM. Their, their bank might be broken. They might also be looking to try and leverage this Viper's Pit and turn it into a round win. They're at pretty extreme risk here of. I mean, giving over a seventh round at this stage of the half to M80 is be, be pretty devastating for them. And it's frustrating because, yeah, they, they used a lot of their big ultimates in the previous round. Now Command, I think, already got used. There was a lockdown thrown by Poise, which I already liked. It was more, it was a further, further forward lockdown, which meant that, like, M80 couldn't even play towards the stairs um, at the back of that B site, sort of towards Rafters. So the weaponry is okay here, Compass. They're now to buy up to a degree, but... Yeah, really need to try and secure a post plant here. But like a default player towards B behind this wall could be good. They've got to get ready though, because M80 love playing close up here uh, amongst these containers of green. Oh, the dizzy shot down immediately. They know they're moving up, so yeah, they have to be pretty cautious in this moment. But the op shot just downed on a proto, and you already lose that main initiator. And that wasn't anything really egregious from a proto, right? It was a very innocent shoulder pick. One of the only ways to really punish that, right, is with the operator. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is gross. Well, we've got a Vandal now in the hands of Xander, I think. Now to pick that up off the body of Sim. And M80 wow. noticed that they're, that they're playing so differently across the side scope as they're playing off A entirely with Ned. But they play so deep into green on the B side. Another thing, too, just being that they weren't really willing to... Oh my gosh. It's not that yeah, there's no. <laughs> I was just waiting for, for seven to go down. Yeah, flawless round from M80, but 
TSM, they weren't willing to do what M80 were. I guess also they're in a very different position where, you know, they can't really split by and, and make sure that they have enough economy for the next round. But they full bought. And even if they couldn't afford a Vandal or, or maybe a Phantom, they pretty much went Guardian, Sheriff, whatever. And, and then settled for that, had everybody else full buy um, in the meantime, which really didn't work out. It felt almost very, very scattered, afraid to play uh, most of the time with the weapons they were dealt. Um, but of course, again, happening once more, just not willing to let themselves to just have a round of, of recollection. They need to clear these spots. This mode has a new little rat spot now, after sort of playing pretty close in green earlier on. The zero point doesn't actually catch on to any of these players playing close here. They don't know about Nismo and is able to burst out of this corner behind a flash. Another opportunity. Poise is so low. DC might catch here, but Nismo is ready for it. That is beautiful from BCJ. Sets up Nismo for his second kill here. And TSM throw themselves into the meat grinder on this part of the map. And it's not the first round it's happened, but M80 have made micro adjustments in their positioning here to again catch out the attackers. Yeah, now they're playing the waiting game now. Watching us to where... Where is GMD gonna go? Where is... Where is Gumon looking for? He does have... That Viper Spit. Could that give leeway? Honestly... Yes, I feel like this is brilliant. Because BCG 11... And then a huge play... Toxins going up. To just give Toxins themselves that Viper Spit down. for some space there. Thirty seconds left. Wrap back around here towards B. If he thinks that he's done enough in selling the idea of him going A to the rest of M80. Very little time obviously left here in the round. And again, the economy of TSM is broken. Ten Absolutely. seconds left. He's gonna go for it. Gimon is going for the one versus three, folks. Spike goes down. This Spike Viper's planted. pit extends here into boiler. Into the screens area, excuse me. Gimon will have to duck back in every now and then to keep it up. Likely though, he gets flooded. And there is a wingman that can check this as well as some of the utility. Mosh is also gonna cover much of it, but Gimon can play to the edges of it. BCJ is gonna step in, be spotted first. That's one for Gimon. Already three in the round. Enemy has to be an ace for Gimon and love that reposition. Now down to 24 HP, there's one player left. The pick comes down and he wins it out. That is dirty stuff from Gimon. Goes for the 1v3. That level of self-belief to drop the Viper's Pit and throw the Hail Mary pays off. What a round for TSM. Dude, what? And all it took was a Viper's Pit, right? Knowing BCJ is low. Taking advantage of the extremities of the pit. And it was so risky because for like a second there, it was about to go down. Managed to go back and give it some time and space. And then just being able to see the legs before they drop. That That's was so that different. was the lucky moment. Dude, that's crazy. Oh, man. An ace for Gimon on the round. Suppressive. Just when things looked like they were going so terribly. This TSM lost multiple players trying to get into B. So at this time, the attacking zero point spotted out two players from M80 pushed up on B side. And they think, okay, well, we might respect that. Especially the Vipers bit has been committed by Xander here. But this has allowed M80 to stack three players at eight. Back to me. They lost that last round, so... They need to make sure they have... The fun begins. Everything under under wraps there. Xander's already pulled out that Viper's Pit down in B, so they do have tons and tons of information coming through, especially down in mid too, so they have everything covered on their side on the defense here. Going through mid now, under tube, behind the dizzy. Defensive smoke's getting thrown out here, though Annette was ready to receive Sim's contact in kitchen. What else is he cooking? The rest of TSM looking to pull back out of Vinton again. Try for A. Xander has not left the pit this entire <laughs> round. So this is TSM's only option remaining. They've got to go for this A hit. Even that's not going to be easy, right? Tons of util to utilize. Now finally being able to get some sort of vulnerability off that. That was dirty stuff there from Nismo. Able to stop the plant, but eventually TSM were able to run him down. Now Xander has to leave the pit. Yeah, how's this going to work though? Already a wraparound coming through from net. Might just be Last able to catch out standing. what the flank's looking like. Oh my gosh, and the timing is so weird, but this drop down's going to ruin everything. They've heard it. Now they can fight for this 1v1. Yeah, that's another round on the board for TSM. 
Last Honestly, nicely done. The Their options were so limited, Gompus. They try to go to B. It's a Viper's Pit from Xander thrown down a green. They try and take mid. They get entirely rebuffed here by this play from Net. They were hoping that the Empress could get them in there. So they got no choice but to commit to this site. And it looked like M80 were anchoring really well. Yeah. It really did. Uh, oh my gosh. They did have everything. Like, everything was working out so perfectly. But I think right there and then, just being able to take a step back and just pick everybody off one by one, lure them into peaking the angle, growing impatient. Working out for the best of their favor, but how long is that going to work out? Of course, 8 to 4 is the ideal for M80, but 7 to 5, definitely the way TSM want to go here. Brody here with that hot flash at the ready. Once more, trying to set Sim up for a success. Each. Oh, the flash even came out there. Did not really force Koala Noob off the angle, though. We can stay here. Thrash brought down. Koala Noob finds that shot from Yellow. Now three players grouped up. M80 have stacked the correct site. And again, Thrash does not find its target. Koala Noob, that is a wild jump peek he tries to take there. In the meantime, Nismo, though, gets value. They've stopped TSM in their tracks behind this Null Command. And it's up to Poison and Proto to fight their way out of this quicksand. Suppressive. It's just so, so well placed for Koala Noob in case they do manage to fight down towards B. Seems like here, especially with the ultimate locked up, now they're looking for mid, and now the noise is heard. Net knows. 30 seconds left. One enemy remaining. Nicely done. He spike realizes down, that with two players crossing, the oh, second one likely has the spike. Beautiful stuff. Great half here for M80 in general. Eight one defensive minute. rounds. A little bit bumpy there over the last couple of rounds after Gimon just broke through on his own. But again, solid way to cap off the half. Hey, mate, you got to be feeling good about this. Turned out. I wasn't figuring him to have finished it off so quickly, but I guess the aim duels, they just work. But switching sides is is where the danger really does start to come. Again, we've talked about the lack of duelists coming onto the side of M80, but man, they managed to make it work on Lotus. Could it work again? I feel like it's a bit different. On a map like Icebox, but I think BCJ and Nimsmo have so much potential to just lead this team to victory. And especially like with the double controller composition, double initiator, this is like very, very much you can't see me, but I can see you. <laughs> so That's what Emani is cooking up. Nets had a great half here. Oh, it's been talked about a bit, but has really stepped into the shoes of Nitro quite admirably here. And now M80 obviously having a nice little hot streak in more recent times and a pretty favorable matchup to start these playoffs of challenges off for them. Yeah. Here. The flash, I think, was popped over by a proto there. I didn't spot anything off of it. Now TSM are pulling their resources out of that A site. Now this is likely heard. And that's why the spike is drifting back maybe away from B. We'll see if they opt to commit. A proto tries to sell it with a couple of lazy ghost shots. There's going to be contact in mid, though, for sure, as the attackers try and cross back. Sam, uh, kind of prepping oh. for something big here, yeah, but already on the pistol round, playing as Arena is very much the way you want to go. Yeah, I mean, what, what better way to show their strengths there, right? Anchoring a side here on that rain of being able to take the... One versus two and come out looking very comfortable. TSM in a great position to shut this down. A flawless pistol round to start their defense half. And given that four round deficit they've suffered coming into half time, it's the perfect way to kick off. Now just needing a little bit more uh, to kind of give themselves some leeway. They are investing earlier into the Vandal, hoping it might lead into the next round. Maybe give themselves a little bit more space and, and room to play with here, which I, I, I truly do believe it will. M80, chances of them being able to take this round slim to none, but of course, they're still running away with that victory from the last game. So it, it, it's still a lot more pressure on TSM to run through with this round, because if not, I mean, what else could happen there? Tim pushed up here, over towards Pipes, but there's going to be a wide multi-swing, and Sim almost knows it. He must have heard the pitter patter of all those footsteps and opts out of the exchange. Great forethought there. Very heads up play from TSM now. As they dig in on this site. And it's looking good with the better weaponry. Only BCJ so fast, but now to find anything. I love that from TSM. Such discipline there. 
to pull Sim out of a situation that at best would have been a trade. Oh. Mm. Okay, what? Well, it works, and now they have a new weapon to use. Oh, I would definitely hand that to Koala Noob. Yeah, okay. The chances of BCJ staying alive in this moment are slim, but they're not zero. Yeah, it's back to a decent with a bit of run and gun, but Poise was just a little too far away. One enemy uh, I think remaining. got jump scared a little bit by that. Seven with three in the round. Farming in some of these pistol and anti-eco environments, and there it is. TSM convert quite nicely. Taking a Vandal into their bonus alongside a Bulldog. Not too shabby. Hey, but this has happened before. A, a new set of Deja Vu where M80, they didn't really get too good of a chance to, to kind of bring themselves back up on that pistol round off of you know, the rounds they were aiming for. They managed to pick themselves back up after a while, being able to, you know, take a look into their playbook, have an understanding as to how TSM want to play into the defense and how they're going to play with that without that that duelist with this double initiator, uh, double double controller comp, right? So it is mostly just figuring out how this is going to work, what they're going to do moving forward. The wall set down over on B for space that might not be given away too easily on the side of TSM. We're well, already going to start to see some of this double control the utility, right? That smoke there shuts down like the, the posting up by yellow that Gimon was trying to make happen here. And Mandy can now throw a mosh over the top of it, throw this Viper wall up and make it very hard for Poise to trade off of any of the action happening on the B side itself. There it is. Just a try swing that M80 go for and Koala Noob is able to come up with two. Seven only had a Sheriff into this round. TSM of course still have that money to buy in the next year and would love just to get some guns out of M80's hands at worst. This will delay things, of course. The fragment thrown down on the site by a proto prevents a plant, but they already have nets so deeply inserted over at the A side that, yeah, M80 know they can rotate across with some confidence, but Sim spots this out. He knows what's coming. Can net find a timing on the Rainer? Might just be able to leer that split second before it blinds you. I mean, he knew that, tried to play off of it as well, which is great. M80, they're settled down on site, so they do have a lot of potential to play with here. So TSM set in a really bad position where now they know that this round is a possible loss here. That Proto has to go massive. It's probably just asking. Yeah. A little too much there for M80. Pretty solid gun round here, keeping three of those Vandals in play. And we saw that, like, the good pressure towards B force out some of that utility over from the yellow side of the map. Just pull out. They made great use of net late in the round. Look at him walk. You see on the minimap where, where net is now. It gets all the way up here to boiler. Yeah, just like slightly early peak there for Sim, just before the the Leah properly bloomed, as you pointed out. Obviously hurts him there. Those are the kind of things that we cl can be cleaned up. But it was unfortunate. That's what let M80 overrun that A site. Fresh. Readily available. Is going to use it. So the timer now set down. But is it going to be in a position where he can easily pick it up? Oh, yeah. He, he's giving himself some leeway there. So BCJ thinking ahead of the ahead of the time. Pop flash out. But Gamond is ready. And Amady, they're fighting back. One for one. But BCJ waits for that extra push into him. And you see that flank up through mid there was crucial. Xander is able to descend upon heaven. The 2v2, though. Poise only has a sheriff. Spike planted. Proto the one with the Vandals. We're not in a great spot to see this action. This is good. This is going to force Xander out of that corner now. He crosses straight into a Proto's face. Wild Noob in the one versus two. Shadows traveling. Smoke to spend. That's going to be thrown on the site itself. Doesn't know if there's going to be a late flank coming through because that alarm bot obviously wouldn't tell him anything with Net already dead. Put it out by the flash. While Anub looking for the timing and a Proto is waiting for it. Great recovery there by TSM. Excellent clearing protocols and that util from Nakao is huge. It sets up both kills. Like the one on Xander that forces him out with a molly and then the flash to dominate Koala Noob at the end of the round. Feels like they're not even waiting to give some time over to, to kind of read into TSM at this point anymore for M80. They've grown impatient, right? Like, and, and this was fine. Isolate the fight, you know, try to find uh, that that flank alongside B. Wait for your team to, to make some moves there. But at the same time, just... They were really forcing that B push, and it felt like when things started to go wrong, there should have been some sort of plan B, and then there just wasn't. But for M80, just being able to learn from that and move forward from it, TSM. Settle down on B once again, just waiting for these players to make the same mistake they have, and tons of information just willingly given away early, early on.
Yeah, that zero point spots four players on the side of M80 as they group up towards green. It might be Xander this round that gets inserted over towards A. Based on where this Killjoy turret is placed, though, you will likely see that drift back in this direction as well, or recall it. Now the pressure starts to mount over towards yellow. Sim, though, not convinced. Knows there is a player lingering here. He will hold A down and potentially force Xander to rejoin the rest of his team. That one way from the defense, that poison orb, slows M80 up. They're going to have to wait for this to drop. Koala Noob, ready for that contact. And there's no follow-up as well. No one looking to trade that. It was really just him on out on the site on his own. And Poise opts to back up. So that's a smoke now over in the direction of Snowman to cover that up. And even though with the Viper Wall coming down, a Proto still can't see what's happening with the plant. And they're still waiting for at least the rotation coming through from Sim here, though. Thrash from Seven might just be able to clear some room for everybody else to make some way. Maybe it was a zero point from this mode that might have actually shut down the Thrash. In the way, it got shot to pieces anyway. One enemy pretty straightforward stuff for M80. Ends up being pretty yeah. close towards the end of the round here, but having that extra layer of controller utility means that TSM have to flash themselves into B while it's being planted and can't get that information. That single omen smoke over towards Snowman put so much pressure on them. It's very much a back and forth too. Like, I don't even feel like there's a, a big difference leading up to this from either side. It really is. Okay, this round, this is working. BCJ, uh, you know, you're feeling quite confident. Okay, 2K comes through. Koala Noob, yeah, like uh, just being able to win out that first 1v1 um, and then playing as a team to, to kind of have those refrags happen, make that possibility even wider or or even more accurate but yeah 11 assists coming down from nismo and xander um with that 10 so they're definitely attempting to lead the pack all the way which seems like again they are doing a very very good job at that but i think tsm with sim uh, being that main problem so early on in the round trying to look for that first initial pick with that initiator um you know dual kind of set up does make it hard for for m80 to know where they want to hit what they want to do um, as this constant information is just being carried away from TSM. I feel like Gimon going up to check yellow there uh, early on in that yeah. previous round really hurt TSM because I don't think your poise wasn't really in a position to, to help him at all. It could have been a straight trade because the, there was a defensive uh, Viper one way um, that sort of prevented anyone else from helping Koala Noob. It would have been a one and done for the Omen if there was just a bit more help there on the site for Gimon. It hurt them. That's what let M80 get in and get that plant down. So this time, we've got three players on TSM side grouped up going over towards green. You see, <laughs> they're really, obviously, on a, on a low buy. They're really hoping to scrap things out, but they've stacked the wrong side. How can they do this, though? Oh, but they pushed back away. They do see poise, but they don't get full information as to who might be on the site. So yeah, that does create some sort of caution in their minds before they push here, given some time for rotation from TSM. I mean, especially on an anti-eco round, Gompers, they have to really check this fight diligently. Welcome yeah. To my world. The Viper's been coming down now for the attackers. Cover going out. I don't think this really covers up into Rafter. Kwan Noob there again, reliving his first couple rounds, but it was very hard for him to find these shots. And Hadizi's going to force him off the top of 410 now to play this low ground. A bit more awkward now for the outlaw player. DSM are on the way in. They do have an ult command here for a proto, but not really the time to be using it now as Wingman spots out some of this action inside the smoke. And Kuala Noob only finds one kill with that shorty. Sim has to step away, though, from the molly. Well played by Nismo, and it's up to a proto who gets spotted. Gets spotted first by Xander as he steps up into the pit and then is slapped back down. M80's economy not exactly established up until this point, so an important round to take three guns out of and still have Null Command and Thrash to spend to potentially shut TSM's gun round down again. And there is a lot more they can shut down here, but I am seeing GMD. I, I feel like there is going to be a huge workup in A, and we're seeing Spike there, we're seeing the Viper there, Grimond, huge potential to just load up on that Viper spit to utilize on the A side. And this might give them potential to take this round back, but of course, how easy is that going to be? BCJ, Thrash of their own to use here yep now viper spit there so it does give them some sort of win condition here at least within the defense tsm may have been expecting a like fast hit behind the null command from m80 and the a site's the only site that it really makes sense to do that on just because of you know you can you know obviously catch the defenders in an ult whereas at b it's a little bit longer range but m80 actually don't 
get very active early on in the round. This is going to tease some TSM players out of position as they push up for a bit of info. Great flash though, look at that setup. Oh man, a proto threw that one from the next postcode by the looks of things. It ends up being a one for one trade. Now up on B are M80. They haven't had to give up too much to get this space. And yes, they're Vipers, they're Gompers, but they have that Omen Smoke still that can cover Snowman. It doesn't shut down that top of sight though. And that was a little risky for Koala Noon. All they needed to do was get Spike down now. And Guman does have the Vipers pit. But there's so many players watching and BCJ like filled with tons and tons of util to use in this moment. So even with that Vipers, but it does give some leeway as to where these players are. And now finally the fight's picked off and it works out in favor of M80, but not so much anymore. BCJ's thrash here is big. Time is short for the defuse. And it's just seven now. Who has to go huge to take the round back? With just enough time, he's been able to do it. Two or so seconds left in the round. And Seven finds a beautiful 2k to keep TSM in this game. I don't know how dangerous it was to have the wingman there. <laughs> like, okay, technically what should have been a 1v2 kind of settled down to be a 2v2 uh, with the wingman there creating that distraction. They knew they had to take pri first priority on something for M80 and they just couldn't, right? Seven making it very, very difficult for this team to play against that. So I, I got to give them kudos, right? Last second decision making. Uh, in that moment, and Gumon didn't even have to use that Viper Spit, so... They do have two ultimates ready for this round, in particular, to keep this couch up going. Right, close gets checked, and that's the Viper Spit getting thrown up here. Zero point obviously doesn't stop that. So Gumon will still be able to sit inside of it comfortably. And this is now going to narrow down or limit M80's options for those side hits. They do obviously have the Poison Orb in mid they can play off. But that's being watched right now by a proto via kitchen. So M80 aren't in the position to imply any potential flank. And you can see right the net there. is starting to close a little bit. Boyce has moved up and is holding an off angle looking in towards mid. And there's some drifting over towards A as you'd expect. M80 to really try and pressure that yeah. site now. They're just... I'm assuming that the play here is... Either wait for Guman to make a move on the extremities or just wait for some sort of explosion might run to kind of come through, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this! They forced Guman out of the pit. Good information. Now we can't get back into the pit at all. That is about to come down. Nothing Guman can do about it at all. But Xander and Nismo go very low in order to do this. Of course, because they were inside that pit trying to clear it. So now they'd like to wait a little bit for those that help to regenerate after decaying down. But TSM aren't giving them much of a window to do that. Hoist is low from Crow's Nest, and now... I love that idea. He thought about going for a lockdown to stop the plant, but he went down to 4 HP. That is going to allow for this plant to go down. Net here playing up close. Sees the wingman come in. Don't know if he spotted Poison there over towards mid. And Poison 4 HP is able to find a kill. We'll be traded out, and it's up to Xander here. In the post bar, but a double face. Even though they were decayed down, Xander couldn't get the job done. They had so much, they overextended. Like, pu pushing themselves way too far out. And I understand wanting to have, like, majority of the site taken over. It's very, very hard to just push yourself back in the extremities, knowing how much that TSM have to work for, right? Blinds coming through from Reyna, from Seven, from a Proto, uh, and then having to work past uh, Command and, and the smokes that he's already set down for the retake. So it, it, it's difficult. And, you know, that creates some sort of fearfulness. I made him feeling like they have the need to overcompensate. And then you're stuck in this roundabout of, man, okay, well, now we pushed up too far. Unfortunately, three people just swung us and we have to try to fight this. So, yeah, uh, uh, more so keeping that discipline. Nismo's kind of going crazy, though, with the flashes and the assists. So, kudos. Just 16 assists. <laughs> that is such an unk effort from Nismo, as usual. <laughs> Again, that I really loved how M80 forced Kimon out of his own Viper's pit there. Yeah. Flush it out with Util and then also confirm... Uh, with the Omen Ultimate that he has stepped out of the pit. They were able then to suppress uh, Gimon and sort of prevent him from getting back in there. But obviously, you did have four people plunged into the Viper's Pit, so they're all decayed down to like 20 HP. So there's a window there where it's very easy for TSM to run up there and, and just, just fight them, spray them even, but that's when we saw the Thrash come out from BCJ, sent to yellow, and made it really hard for there to be any reprisal from TSM. The round breaks down, TSM end up winning it, of course, in those last moments. Sim saves the day, but... Yeah, clever to try and clear that Viper's pick because normally you just wouldn't bother going B on a round like that. 
Placing swarm grenade. Now it's got to get more, um, feel more tactical. Because again, that main source of firepower coming through from, like, the, the initial amount of youth hill. And they're from BCJ now. Okay, information's come through. You know, nobody's out in the opening spots of, of you know, on top of catwalk here. So how can we play for this? And they also threw a zero point to pipes that saw nothing. So they can surmise here that Poise is holding the site very loosely. Which is good for M80, right? They have the weaker weapon, so they'd love to be able to get in and actually get to play Anchor on this site. Poised has a lockdown that you probably, you know, feel okay about using here. You want to force those weaker guns away. What did I just see? Koala move! No way! He could have taken Poise down as he went to deploy the lockdown and could have gotten rid of the lockdown itself. But he no ends way. up pulling out of there. That is awkward as heck. Now they're going to try and retake back into this site. Good util. The Dizzy's getting very, very busy as BCJ finds Sim. This might actually work out. Seven has to play close up with an outlaw. No. The first shot is good, but the second not so much. BCJ, four kills with the Stinger. Are you kidding me? What a nuts round for M80. Dude, it's always BCJ. Like, in the moments where you really, really need it, it's BCJ to come up in clutch. It's BCJ to make sure everything's going well and settled. And again, the, the, the source of util just moving forward to uh, allow them those picks, allow them the retake, allow them the refrag potential is insanely huge. And that was around they needed. That was around that they so, so desperately needed to come through with. But I don't even think they... Th does it say they didn't win that? Was that a TSM round? Uh, yes, uh, they got the defuse. <laughs> I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Guys, never mind. BCJ did not do that. He's not him. It's over. It's I mean, over. I, I did call it a nuts round for M80 because obviously you saw BCJ you know, kill the defuser, but uh, it obviously, you know, the defuse came in just before he could find that elimination. So uh, yeah. very reasonable to be confused. <laughs> I, I, I just saw BCJ explode on the site and I was like, yeah. damn, that's crazy. I mean, I was glazing homeboy even after he lost the round. So it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> But that was, of course, a TSM round win. But they lost all their weapons to do it. And so it puts them in a bit of a weird eco spot where M80 now have lockdown and thrash, both really relevant when it comes to, you know, either taking the A site or, or retaking it after the fact. Oh, they definitely heard that TP. There's no way. Kill seven. Had some early take on that. Now knowing somebody's just within side of Nest and they don't find it yet, though. Beautiful for seven. He is currently suppressed. Have it all avoid that paranoia that comes in. It's just back and forth trading here. And a Proto gets knocked. GMD, those going to be there from Rafters. Ridiculous. And that's a bit of an awkward round there for TSM. They were very uh, unsteady in terms of their weaponry. And a bunch of Guardians bought into that round and M80 had a decent buy. See how that played out again. I think Thrash here... Gompers, there's a route that Thrash can sort of go on top of 410 into Crows yeah. and then onto Rafter. If you take that route this round, I think BCJ sees a heck of a lot more uh, than what he came up with with the Thrash there. I think he doesn't I really catch anyone with it. I agree. I think that's been kind of the cause of issue with a lot of what we've been seeing getting thrown out too. Like, uh, you know, there there was a lot of just, just bare swings moving forward onto the site. And I feel like that was the demise of, of what M80 were really pushing for on the attack. He, Seven got away with way too many knowing where seven was too originally which sucked um and kind of let m80 down downhill but these site looking pretty attractive uh, at least for a fake yeah they check close m80 know that tsm are on a kind of weird economy where there might be some permutations of stingers and sheriff mixed in here so they do have to check so many of these corners and yet they're just not convinced that B is where they want to end. They might just insert Sandy here. Oh, nice. Okay, gets rid of Gimon. That is big. That also means that that Viper one way can no longer be used by the defenders. And that drags three players effortlessly over to the B side of the map, which means that A is right for the taking. Lockdown. <laughs> Let's leave some space over to M80, and that's what they need. Finally, some space, okay? There's nothing to worry about other than just, you know, getting themselves onto site. Let's focus on the post plan and leave that util there. This is potential to finally use your util uh, and give yourself some space here. That's a big investment in this round, alt-wise, from M80. Lockdown came out. Now the non command being used by Nismo. He's posted up on 410, and he wants to shut down any of that potential retake util because he knows Seven can thrash his team into the site. But that ultimate man's over now. Sim though just takes that one raw. And here comes that thrash. That was a concern, of course, for M80. And it's Nismo that gets caught on top of 410. So Koala Noob drops back to play off of him in case they try and dive on their detained player. 
but it has to be a save here for TSM. Boys going as far as to save a Spectre. That's how chalked they feel this round is. They've done it, at least. Really, all they need to avoid <laughs> is just picking so off those fights, dude. <laughs> I like I it's because it's just because of that lockdown and that's what that again that's what scares me like they can't get the post plan um you know if you're m80 it's it's not it's not a good look they just do so good for tsm in, in picking off again those early fights and finding that early info and making sure that this site is unpakeable uh, with such cheeky corners and now for m80 they have to find a way around that i think xander's gonna be huge huge detriment into this round especially do you want to go with t absolutely not but tsm do you can't set up for a, a post plan here. Luzen has not bought a uh, Phantom, which is sometimes what you look for if you think that you know the Viper is going to play from inside the pit in the uh, in the post plan, or that or a Judge, of course, in more cash trap scenarios. Yeah. Quite a push up here for TSM. This spot for Sim with seven playing from Jay. Yeah, that is absolutely terrifying. Great variation here from the defenders, and they're not ready for Sim playing from Nest either. So that's two free kills, and TSM can just fall back now too quick it's too quick they know tsm like to push they 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 don't prepare themselves for it and this isn't the m80 that i'm kind of accustomed to the m80 that adapts the m80 that reads into the consistent plays of tsm and now it feels like tsm are more so just reading into m80 and an making it a lot easier for them but gmd oh he's ready Built it, BCJ gets... oh, okay careful there young son <laughs> still some of that killjoy right. util that has to be cleared so in the three versus four you notice here that Xander still doesn't feel like he's online for the Viper's Pit plan. Still, okay, he's going to throw that down in a much more passive spot, but this does cover the spike. Gives M80 a way to sort of work in, but it can be circumvented. You'll notice that already Sims wrapping around this Viper's Pit to try and enter it from the rear. And Molly's been thrown on in. Seven gets caught out, though. Sim has to make a play here. Tries to go for two. Great transfer. Not quite there. And Xander thought he had it. The shorty found one. And at the end of the day, M80... Come up short. They had to make the play to try and end the match here. But well, we're going to overtime, folks. The overtime. Switching sides. That's what was needed. Overtime. But as we switch sides, I think that'll give, um, you know, some time for for kind of M80 to, to really look back at the mistakes that they've made um, and just go back to the roots of, okay, you know, this is when we were the most dominant and this is when we weren't. How can we fix things? Um, and obviously make things work in our favor. But I think TSM, they've just gotten better with time, right? The warm-up was the last game. This is now exactly what they needed, having Sim on that arena to, to fearfully get themselves onto the site. And honestly, just everybody else on this team really, really making those shots work. Been a fun couple of rounds, right? That one went to the wire. Um, Xander, obviously... Felt like I was pretty confident that the Vipers pit would make things quite hard for TSM. They had to fight back from losing two players at the start of that round, right? So decent from M80. But now forget about that. We are into this overtime. And the one thing that's relevant is that you'll note that obviously four orbs here is what you start with as, a, as the gecko, I think. So BCJ has already managed to pick one up. There is the potential to, to use Thrash in some of these overtime rounds. I think that's what M80 are trying to play for. Okay, we're going to start hitting A a little bit faster now. I think Dizzy just checks close just in case we saw TS, uh, uh, M80 go for what TSM did in that prior round and embed those players quite deeply. Decent smoke timing oh. now. This is going to funnel TSM. All right, BCJ and Crows. Doesn't actually see anything except the wingman and he brings down and Javon doesn't check his corner. Thinks that Crows is empty. It has a decent off angle here on rafters. Boys might be a problem for him, though, as that wall comes down. He spots him out, though. Wins that duel. A second. Seven falls and a proto. Next up to the plate. Able to survive with 30 HP. But eventually being shut down by Nismo from rafters. That's M80. Take the round. We're seeing a repeating theme of not checking corners here. <laughs> don't I don't like it. I think we uh, I think we need to we need to reevaluate what's going on, but. It's so it, tough, it like, hard. you have to be fast here, and I think yeah. GMD already sees the player uh, at rafter uh, as he comes across on the zip line. Yeah. so he's like, oh, I have to fight one of these people? I'm assuming that he didn't realize there was a player in Crows, but he had no choice but to take that fight there. When you have to play fast, and also, yeah, you just don't have, like, full info about where the anchor players are on that site. 
Here. I haven't mid. seen anything out. Boys and Orr left down in mid, so yeah, that it's pretty much an indicator that somebody might be wanting to peek out around in mid, but it's a different approach. It's so much more slower in trying to lure out the players and, and trying to change the positioning and make sure, hey, we know somebody's pushing out A, we know somebody might be pushing out B. Let's just let's just slow it down just a bit. Heavy flash utility here over on the B site. And maybe not necessarily trying to sell anything, but maybe trying to obscure that there's a flank coming up through mid. Poise has heard it, has to hold this corner. Koala wins it out. That's best case scenario, honestly, for the attackers there as Poise was in a one and done. Can they push up on this B side further? Xander is down. So again, that the post plant vi Viper wall is not an option. But Net thought he had an angle. He thought it was slick. But Sim comes in on that late reflank through mid to shut him down. And this is a player advantage for TSM on this retake. You see, Gimon is checking his corners. Checking all of them <laughs> as he now gets into Crow's nest. And there's about to be some frantic fighting on the side as Paranoia whistles past his feet. It's Koala Noob inside the dark cover spraying down. And Nismo, he reflanks the reflanker. And a molly for the site here. Impossible for TSM wow. to bounce back. And that's M80 wrapping up the series. They, they, in this moment when the pressure is high, you know what, guys? Uh, we were just fooling around. The attacking side, it's not really that hard. We're just going to run away with that. And that's exactly what they did. The smiles on their faces definitely show how how stressful it was, right? Going home with a 2-0, and o, being able to just prove to everyone, okay, listen, we had a couple bad rounds on the attack. Yeah, okay, maybe the composition was a little quirky. No duelist, haha, <laughs> silly me. But it just works. They went no duelist this whole time. That's crazy to me. The fact that we, we can see something so weird. We can see something so against the normal composition and, and normal meta of what we normally typically see and just see it work for somebody else. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a classic M80 comp and, and that obviously means that they like have access to so much of this utility, right? Double controller, double initiator is extremely powerful. And of course, we mentioned it a few times. Net was really, really solid, especially on that first half for M80. Great showing here. We're going to head over our desk here to break things down, of course, have a look back at this first series and set us up for our second and final series of the day. <laughs> hey, I mean, TSM put up a fight there to take it into overtime to try and take us into a map three. But in the end, not going to be good enough. M80 are going to take the series 2-0. The curse continues. M80 still is not lost to TSM here. And they're moving on to live another day here at Lemon Kiwi here in our playoffs. I think there's a silver lining here if you, you know, get a telescope out for sure. I think this was a way better icebox for TSM than they've ever played. Like, in terms of how many rounds they took, how close this was, and going up against a comp that didn't even have a duelist, I thought TSM were gonna have an edge here playing the Reyna, but it, this is a, a TSM team that I still think need a lot of time to maximize the value out of their utility, but still a better showing out of TSM, but M80 still the better team. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say that despite TSM having like an incredibly close match with M80, it's, it did feel like M80 did have the more fundamental synergy that they needed to like, you know, in terms of executes, in terms of retakes, like, and, but TSM overly relied on a lot of these hero plays that kind of made this game seem a lot closer than it, in my opinion, was like in terms of macro, at least. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's a, kind of like a positive and a negative in terms of like the yeah, TSM does have the firepower, but overall, I felt like M80 had a, a very strong game plan. They maximize the value from the fact that they have four agents with rechargeable abilities. I mean, that, that, that just seems like kind of like Valorant abuse, no? Like you are playing four agents that all have recharging utility, like the amount of value you can get from start to finish just seems insane. And we were kind of laughing in DMs, just like a lot of these rounds came down to like team deathmatch. Like you would have these great setups and at the end, of, like all that utility didn't matter because it was about once all the smokes came down or once you rounded that corner, it's team versus team and who had the better mechanics. And sometimes that was TSM, sometimes that was M80. It really was a scrap. And I like that Sierra said that it was a fight. Like this really was a battle at times. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and it was fun to watch. Even if TSM, it was the hero plays to bring them to the 12 to 14. It makes me, it's, it still goes back to the TSM. They have this potential. They have the players. I mean, come on, getting this ace. You see all of a sudden, like these three villains, these clutch situations is just so good. But in the end, M80, not going to be toppled quite like that. This is an M80 that they for a little bit kind of lost like the, the top dog status here in challengers and they're looking to try and get that back this performance today definitely a really good step in that we'll have an opportunity to talk to them as well after a short break enjoy the post series highlights we'll be right back with quality
enemy remaining. Spike planted. One enemy remaining left. One enemy remaining. Spike planted. One enemy remaining. 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 And with a strong 2-0 win, it's going to be M80 to move on a little further in the upper bracket here of our playoffs. And on the line to chat with me a little bit more about it, I have Koala Noob. I have to say big congratulations on the series and big congratulations on the stunt that y'all pulled off in this first map. We have to talk about that first. <laughs> Three Centi Lotus. What's going on over there? What are y'all cooking? Uh, Honestly, it just requires a lot of trust. We were... Uh, like my coach messaged me one night and he's like, what do you think about this comp? And I'm like, I, I love it. And then he's going to be like, yeah, but we're going to have to do a lot of convincing on the team because some of the team like might have not like agreed with it. But we talked to them about it. Happy Happy's an incredible coach. Honestly, the best, probably the best coach in Valorant. I'm not going to lie, even though he's in challengers and he showed us great stuff and we believe in him and we trusted the comp and we ran it and it looks great and we're very happy with the result. Yeah, we, we all loved watching it. Watching this come together was great. So Coach is a genius. Bring this idea to the team. Says the team needs convincing. Did the team need convincing at all when they saw it? Or because it is a little bit more unorthodox. <laughs> yeah, so I I'm not like I got a little overzealous and I brought the comp up like really fast. Like when he talked to me about it, I'm like, guys, what do you think about this? And they're like they started laughing a little bit. But like more in a joking way. But uh honestly when Happy like started showing like all the ideas he had and stuff with it, like we were pretty on board. And yeah, I mean, everybody's very comfortable with the roles. We're all very flexible players. So it wasn't like anybody was off role. Uh, and it just worked and we're very happy. Hey, it, it was a show that is absolutely for sure. And now we're in bringing something like that in the playoffs. I think it's just absolutely wonderful. You guys get this 2-0 victory today. And even when we kicked off the series, seeing this map pool that was picked, Lotus, which M80 have been pretty decent on in the past, and then Icebox where you guys slaughter. Was this kind of a series from the get-go that you kind of thought was just going to go your guys' way? Like, this is a map pool that seemed heavily favored. Yeah, I mean, we have a very strong map pool either way. Like, we're very confident in all the maps we play. But I think TSM is a team that, like, works really well into the style that we play and the maps that we, like, really like to play. So I think it, we just pretty much knew we were going to win. That's great stuff. There's one last thing that I want to ask you. You actually tweeted out a little bit ago talking this was after your win up against mxs talking about feeling the team is going back to vintage m80 and i want to ask a little bit about what that vintage m80 means if it's something that's more results based or something with like a core identity of the team because when we're looking at the team in comparison to ascension last year you guys still have a core group but you do have two different players uh yeah so i think the biggest difference is uh when we had nitro before we replaced them with net we were very static and like kind of just like hoping that the setup that we started off with works and we kind of didn't really <clears throat> we didn't really have any like strong mid rounds to help us uh adding in net and that's not on anyone it's just i guess it's just the way that our team functioned when we picked up net honestly he's an incredible kid 
He's a great player. I ever like the first day we tried him out, I'm like, I love this guy. Like he's really good. He knows what he's doing. He's very vocal for us on the CT side, which is uh, I think something that we lack the older duration of our roster. And being able to have a lot more like proactivity and uh, just like good overall mid rounds on both sides is just something that's really benefiting us. And also Xander becoming IGL. He IGL'd in the past. He's a lot more comfy now with the time that we've had before playoffs. And I'm um, like, he's doing a great job by GLing. Nismo is an incredible player. He's everybody on the team is vocal. Nismo is super vocal. He has great ideas. BCJ is just insanely vocal, has great ideas. Everybody just knows what we want to do now. And that's the M80 that was like that last season. We were all vocal, all confident. And but by vintage, that's what I mean. We all are confident enough to call stuff and be proactive enough to where we are trusting each other with the comms that we make. And I think that's going to help us through this playoffs. I, I'm glad to hear it because M80, you guys were so close last year. So to see you guys hit that four with playoffs and a lot ahead is fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. Congratulations again on the Thank series. You. Thanks for chatting with me. I'll let you go and Thank rest, you. but have a good rest of your night, okay? Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As for us, great first series for the day. But of course, we still have one more on the horizon. We have Oxygen Esports going up against Sad Esports after the break.